Changing hair color in Photoshop seems like a pretty straightforward thing as far as just adjusting the hue and a selection, but there's actually some more advanced ways to do this, and we can actually add shine to some of the hair areas and make it look a lot more realistic. So go ahead and open princess.jpg. I'm going to give you a preview of what we'll be doing. So from this red hair, and it's a lot easier to take a photo of say a person with red hair or light brown hair or blonde hair and make it different colors as opposed to dark black hair uh, especially if it's low lighting if it's outside a little bit lighter that is a little bit easier so we're going to convert this to brown hair we're also going to convert it to black hair and also adding these highlights here I'll show you how to do that and we're also going to change it to blonde I know the selection here is a little bit off but I'm going to show you how to do that in this lecture I'm first going to show you another method. Uh, what we're going to do is duplicate the layer. So if you want to work on the other one with this method, that's fine. And after duplicating this layer, we want to make a selection of the hair area. So I'm going to use the quick selection tool and just click and drag right here. That does a pretty good job in this example. So what we can do is use this in conjunction with some of the other selection tools. So I'm going to actually use the lasso tool and hold shift and just click and drag. And it's okay if this is not perfect at this point. I'm going to actually use a refine edge technique, which is really good at just refining the edge, especially in hair. And if we want to subtract from, hold Alt on the PC or Option on the Mac. And we can click and drag and subtract from. So once you have that selection, just go to Select, Refine Edge. It says Output to Selection, and what you can do is actually just do output to new layer with layer mask if you want it on a new layer and we also want to go to smart radius and bring that radius up a little bit and you'll see if you really overdo it what it's doing and we can also paint with this refine radius tool just along the, the edge there All right, and it should make the edge a little bit better especially with the hair All right, so once you have a selection, and I would go back and spend some more time on this, but just for the purpose of the tutorial, um, click OK. And now what it's done is it creates a new layer with that layer map. If you hit the visibility icon on the bottom layer, you'll see that we just see the hair. So with this top layer selected, go ahead and go to Image, Adjustments, Hue Saturation. And then we want to click and drag left and right, and it's going to interact with that original hue. So it may be over red, but it's actually making it blue because it's interacting with what's already there. If you want it just to be whatever this hue is here, so it's easier to tell what output it'll be, just click Colorize. Then it's going to lay that hue on top of it. So we could change it to red, even green, blue, purple, red, you know, whatever. And you can adjust the saturation, and you can adjust the lightness, of course. Then you just click OK, and then you have hair color that's changed. And of course, we would want to adjust the edge here a little bit. So that's one method of changing hair color. I'm going to show you a different method, though. So first thing we want to do, I'm going to duplicate this. So we're working on a duplicated layer so we can compare the before and after. With this, let's convert this to brown first. So instead of doing an adjustment layer, say, with hue saturation, let's click on create a new adjustment layer and instead of go to selective color and make sure reds is checked and it's going to select all this red area. Of course it's going to select some on the cheeks and the lips and we can mask out. Click and drag the cyan, magenta, yellow, black levels and I found that with the top one, the cyan, if you bring it up a little bit, and then with the cyan, you bring it down to about 20s, and same thing with the yellow, and with the blacks, bring that up to about 20 or so, and I think bring magenta even over to the left a little bit more, and then yellows. All right, so there's before and there's after, so that's pretty straightforward. That's just a different technique instead of doing the hue saturation. So let's group this and there's our brown. So I just wanna put that in there so we'll, we can compare and contrast. Now select the background layer and just control or command J and duplicate that again. And let's convert her hair to black now. 
and what you can do, and I'll show you also how to mask out areas that might be affected that we could also do in the other one. Any of these, we need to mask out certain areas and just leave the, the hair adjusted. So for this new method, what we want to do, instead of selective color, let's just use a hue saturation adjustment, kind of like the first method I showed. So create a new adjustment layer, go to hue saturation, and make sure this is very important. Instead of master, make sure you check reds. And bring the saturation all the way over to the left. And there's still a little bit of red in there. So if you do the plus, make sure you click that red there. There. All right, so now it's just desaturated her hair. And if you had areas that you did not want in there, you'd hit the, the minus. But that's going to, well, that actually does OK. Because the her skin color, see if you get too close to this area where she kind of has rosy cheeks and it's going to remove that from it. So you don't want to do that. All right. All right. So now that her hair is desaturated, we need to adjust just the darkness of it. So we can add another adjustment layer. And let's go to curves. And I'm just going to bring this down, like a bit darker. Now you notice with these two methods, uh, it's also affecting her face and her, the background and her skin. It's not just affecting this area of her hair. Well, that means we need to mask out. We could do this with the brown method as well. So choose a nice soft edge brush. Make sure hardness is set to, let's do 0%. And then we need to paint some black in, so make sure the foreground color is black. And left and right bracket will resize, and you just want to click and drag. Something like that. And we could do the selection with the refine edge. Just for time's sake, I'm just going to go right up to the edge here. And you can press X to flip them. And if you want to paint white on this hair here, which we want to keep desaturated. Now method to, you know, we can't really tell what we're masking at where we're not unless we alt click it. So we can do that. So that shows that we need to paint a little bit more black in here. And another method is you can also control or command J and just change the blending mode to multiply. That will really bring out uh, where we've missed. All right, it'll really accentuate it. And then we can delete that duplicated hue saturation layer once we see missed a couple spots here as well. Now we have the curves adjustment, but we need to have this same exact mask from here to there. So we can just hold down Alt on the PC or Option on the Mac and click and drag it from one to the other. And it will do the same exact mask as you can see there. All right. Uh, so, and you saw during that technique, another method, if you don't want to use the curves adjustment, we could actually just duplicate this and then set it to multiply like we did earlier. That'll make it pretty dark as well, but I just prefer to do the, the curves adjustment because it just makes it darker and we can control it a lot better. All right, so we have the hair here and it's pretty dark. We can double click on it, make it even darker if we want, and we could mask out the background as well if you don't want that to be affected and just the hair but we can actually add a little bit of a shine to this as well so add a new layer and then we want to make white the foreground color and then as far as our brush we want a soft edge brush and just click and drag over here where you think that the sun would be hitting you know something like that we need to add a layer style to this, so double click on it, or you can go to layer, layer style, obviously. And what we want to do is under blending options, this top area, we want to hold down option on the Mac or Alt on the PC and just click and drag. And you'll see the blend if effect. And then click that one over as well. So something like, for, for what I was doing, I've got about 62 and 175 or so. All right, and then click OK. This is before and there's after. So it adds a little bit of shine to it. If you think it's too harsh or too strong, we can adjust the opacity of that so it's more subtle. There's before, there's after. 
So that's pretty cool. So I just selected all those and then create a new group. So we have brown so far, black, two different methods. One was selective color adjustment, and then the other one was hue saturation and a curves as well and painting some shine on top. And we could do a hue saturation for the first one too. I just want to show you a different method. All right, so next one is blonde hair, and that one's the most challenging. What we want to do is we have this duplicated layer. Go ahead and press Control or Command J. Let's go ahead and for this one, do a selective color adjustment again. Make sure reds is selected there. And just bump up the cyan a little bit, maybe up to 30 or so, 30. Bring the magentas over to the left, the negative 34 or so. And then the yellows, bump that up to about 45 or so. And then bring the black way down to about, uh, let's see, uh, like negative 61 or so. So it still has a reddish hue to it. So what we can do is actually press Control or Command J, and that will duplicate the layer. And then you can actually change the blending mode to screen. And the problem is it's affecting all this different area around here. So we need that same mask from earlier, right? So instead of redrawing it, we can go to the black adjustment here we had over here and I'll click and drag it over here and there we go we, we don't have to repaint it in especially if we took our time and I'm gonna click and drag it again into both of those alright so now it's in both of those and you'll see an area where we missed but and that looks a little bit better uh, it's a little bit strong though so you can bring the opacity down a little bit same thing with this one even uh, you could adjust it just a little and another thing you could do is create a new layer and just paint, let's see, kind of yellowish, a yellowish hue on top with a soft edge brush. However, that looks terrible until we change it to overlay and bring the opacity way down. And you can still keep painting even after you change. And obviously we'd want to go in here and make a selection and just affect the hair. All right, so with opacity at about 29% and overlay, it still is pretty strong, so I'd actually bring it down even more. And then we're getting toward that area where it looks a lot more realistic. Like if you look over here, that looks a lot more realistic blonde color. Obviously, we'd need to go in and really adjust. And another way to bring on more blonde hair, which is the trickiest, of course, is if I go back to this other photo here, this is already somewhat blonde. There's kind of a red tint to her hair, but uh, we could do that other technique that I was going over to begin with. So if I make a selection here, just like earlier, and for time's sake, because I don't want you spending your whole time just watching me do a selection, I'm just going to, we would get rid of that area inside there, of course, and do a refined edge. But just for time's sake, uh, just add a new adjustment layer. So we'll go to we could do hue saturation. We could also do color balance, which I haven't covered yet. Uh, so either hue saturation or color balance. And you notice when I added that adjustment layer, it already applies the mask to the area that I had selected. So now we can actually go left and right, and it will change that. So if we just go to the left on yellow, bring this back over, then it makes it a lot more blonde. All right, you might be thinking, oh, well, yeah, but it's a little bit strong. Well, all you have to do is bring the opacity down, something like that. You can also experiment with the blending modes. You know, multiply will make it darker, like kind of a more sandy blonde or brownish blonde, and then overlay, and there's also screen, which will make it a lot lighter. All right, obviously this edge we would change, and one way to do that, which we'll wrap up this tutorial with me showing you how to do that, because the edges are very important in this. So I'm zoomed in pretty far here, and you see the edge here. We've already got the mask made. What you can do is I have the foreground color set to white. If you click and drag the edge here with the soft edge brush, it just makes a lot softer edge. You can also bring, I have the flow down to about 60%, so you can try that as well. And that makes the edge a lot more realistic, all right? So something like that. 
And again, if you did the refine edge, that edge would look a lot better like we did with the first technique. All right. But the cool thing about using a mask is we can mask out after the fact. And we can paint some content back in as well. So that is changing hair color in Photoshop. I know I've went over a couple methods, but just a summary, we use masking and we also use layer adjustments for the most part, unless you just want to make an adjustment to one layer and uh, not affect the layers below it. In some of these, we used selective color adjustments where you just affect the red or the original color. Some will use hue saturation ad adjustment layers. And then in that most recent method, I also went over color balance, which you can use as well. Uh, the idea is that we want it to make it look pretty realistic. So practice this and we can get pretty good at changing hair color in Photoshop.